Howdy, folks. Your old buddy Ernest P. Worrell here. I'm going to tell you about one of my greatest adventures. It's called Ernest Goes to Camp. Catchy title, isn't it? Of course, you can read along with me in your book if you like. But remember, my motto is turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Okay, here we go. It started out just like any other summer. Camp Kikiki was about to open, and I, due to my engineering genius, was in charge of getting everything in tip-top condition. I hopped my ladder back and forth as a couple of the counselors assisted me with the camp sign. More to the left, Ernest. No, no, more to the right. I believe I made one hop too many. <laughs> know what I mean? Of course, I didn't plan to spend my whole life fixing stuff at Kikiki. I knew that someday I was destined to be a counselor. The day before the campers arrived, I sensed an important assignment was coming my way because Mr. Tipton, that's my boss, called me into his office. Ernest, we've got a major plumbing problem over in Campsite B. Get over there on the double. I have to admit, though, unplugging toilets wasn't exactly what I had in mind. It seemed like the only people who really understood me were Nurse St. Cloud and her uncle, the last living chief of the Kikiki Indians. Nurse St. Cloud taught me the Kikiki Sign Language so I could communicate with the chief. Nurse St. Cloud was also the one who taught me about Camp Kikiki's proud history. Once, these woods were full of young Kikiki men. You see, Ernest, this camp is built on the very spot where the Kikiki Indians taught their young men how to become brave warriors. If you become a counselor, you'll have to teach your boys how to follow the path of the brave, just like my ancestors did. Well, that's right up my alley, Miss St. Cloud. I'm what you call a real man's man, know what I mean? I'm glad you feel that way, Ernest, because it's time for your yearly shots. I can take it, Miss St. Cloud. I'm a man with grit in my teeth and nails in my knuckles. A man who knows how to take punishment. A man with... a man... Oh, wait a minute, Miss St. Cloud, is that your smallest needle? Oh, now, come on, Ernest. You know this won't hurt. Everything was ready for the arrival of the campers when Mr. Tipton called together all of his best men and told us about Operation Second Chance. I just got off the phone with the governor. Our camp has been chosen by the state to take a group of disadvantaged kids from the Institute for Boys. The counselors weren't thrilled when they heard the news. Better hide your wallet. Yeah, and keep your boxing gloves handy. I wasn't worried, though. My motto is there's no such thing as a bad kid. Of course, when I went to pick them up, they did their best to test my mettle, know what I mean? Their leader's name was Bobby Wayne. The youngest one was Mustafa, Moose for short. I could tell right away that he and I were going to be good buddies. Hey, Ernest, don't mind these other guys. They're really okay when you get to know them. Those second chance boys had a hard time getting adjusted, and I can't really say the other campers welcomed them with open arms. The first day in the mess hall, one of the campers tripped Little Moose. Bobby wasn't about to keep quiet about that. Hey, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Oh, yeah? Who's gonna make me? After that, the lid just blew off the place. Fortunately, I stepped in and used my head to settle the ruckus. Even though the fight wasn't their fault, the counselor assigned to the Second Chance Boys decided they needed heavy discipline. Instead of doing something fun, they ended up digging a ditch. Bobby was pretty disappointed. Hey, man, where'd they find this counselor? The state penitentiary? Some second chance. Myself, I would have gone at it another way. But I wasn't in charge. Not yet, anyway. The whole picture changed when the second chancer's counselor had an accident. Being one smart cookie, Mr. Tipton called on me. Ernest, how would you like to be a counselor? It's a dream come true. Ernest P. Worrell, camp counselor. I sure like the sound of that music, but little did I know that at that very moment, something was taking place that could ruin everything I'd worked for. On a piece of land right next to Camp Kikiki, a mining company had struck a vein of something called petrocyte. The head of the company, Mr. Crater, was talking to some of his people. I don't need to remind you men how valuable petrocyte is to industry. 
There are millions at stake here. We've got to buy up all the land in this area. The first thing Mr. Crater did was to send his lawyer to try and convince the chief to sell off the land. Now, considering that the chief didn't speak English, that was no easy job. Luckily, Nurse St. Cloud was there to translate. What my grandfather is trying to make you understand, sir, is that this is all sacred tribal land. He will never sell it. Meanwhile, I was ready to start teaching my boys about the great outdoors. Bobby was real excited. You are going to guide us on a hike in the woods? I can't wait. As we hiked along, I demonstrated how not to act when meeting ferocious badgers on the trail. That gave Bobby and the boys a chance to practice first aid. Well, what do you think of our field dressing, Ernest? It's great, fellas, but I can't breathe. You got me wrapped up like a mummy. <laughs> hey, come back. Get me out of here. The next day, I engineered a barbecue machine that I could control while I lounged in my chair. But something went wrong. Instead of cooking dinner, it started dragging me into the barbecue to be dinner. I calmly called to my boys for assistance. Moose! Uh, Bobby! Uh, uh, help! Hey, Ernest! What's cooking? You're really throwing yourself into this meal, aren't you? Later, that very same day, I faced my first big challenge with the boys, getting them to enter the contest for the best Indian project. Luckily, help came from what you might call an unexpected source. You see, when the second chancers saw the canoe that the other kids were building, that kind of got their competitive juices flowing. Moose led the way. Those guys think they're so great. Yeah. Then Bobby rallied the troops. Yeah, they need a lesson in losing, and we're just the guys to teach them. The boys decided to build a teepee. It was gratifying for me to see him working like a real team. I'd never seen Mustafa so happy. You know, Ernest, this place isn't so bad. I wouldn't mind staying here forever. I knew how he felt because I felt the same way. While the boys worked, I went to ask the chief for some expert advice about the teepee. But there was someone with him. Maybe you can help me, sir. I'm from a group of local landowners, and we're trying to get that mining company out of our area. I'd like the chief to sign our petition, but he doesn't seem to understand English. Well, communicating with your native cultures is my specialty. So I helped the man, and the chief signed on the dotted line. The next day, Mr. Tipton called us all together and gave us some bad news. Campers, the chief is selling our land and we've got exactly two days to clear out. I know it's hard to believe, but it seems that someone tricked him into signing away his rights. I knew then that I had made the biggest mistake of my life. The man at the chief's place had been Mr. Crater, the mine owner, and the low-down dirty trickster that got the chief to sign was me. That night, me and my boys were pretty low, especially my buddy Mustafa. I'm not going back to the Institute. I don't care what anybody says. I can't go back, Ernest. That's when I knew I had to follow the path of the brave. Tomorrow I'm going to get this land thing worked out, even if I have to jack a few jaws and hand out a few knuckle sandwiches. Know what I mean, boys? Yeah! The next morning, the mining crew arrived. The foreman was a monster-sized guy, but I'd handled his type before. I marched right up to him and set him straight. You and your men are here under false pretenses, so you better move off or I might have to jack a few jaws, know what I mean? I guess I was a little out of shape. The foreman got in a couple of lucky punches and the next thing I remember, I was lying on the ground, watching my boys walk back to their cabin. That would have been the end of it all right there, but Nurse St. Cloud paid a visit to the second chancers. You boys don't know the meaning of friendship. How can you turn your backs on Ernest when he's the only person who stood up for you and tried to help. Bobby really took her words to heart. She's right, guys. He may be a dope, but he's our dope. Let's go tell Ernest we're with him. Yeah. We knew our only chance was to stand our ground and fight. So together we built an awesome catapult. And for ammo, we collected everything that wasn't tied down. As we positioned ourselves, the boys looked a little nervous. 
So I repeated an ancient Indian saying that Nurse St. Cloud had taught me. Boys, my motto is, if your heart is pure, the knife will not cut you, the stone will not break you, and the arrow cannot catch you. Know what I mean? Just then, the miners spotted us, and they charged us with everything they had. But when it comes to a showdown, your old buddy Ernest walks tall. We were like the 5th Cavalry, and the Marines all rolled up in one. We even launched our secret weapon, parachuting snapping turtles. Just then, Nurse St. Cloud showed up, waving a piece of paper. This is a judge's order. You miners have one hour to clear off this land. It was lucky for them because those snapping turtles were nasty little devils, know what I mean? I had brought my boys through a real test of manhood, just like the Kikiki Braves of old. Nurse St. Cloud offered her congratulations. I'm so proud of you, Ernest. You saved the camp, and you helped the boys gain some self-respect. Yes, indeed. I guess when it comes to molding young minds and saving the day, there's no one who can beat Ernest P. Worrell, engineering genius and counselor supreme. Know what I mean? Hey, buddy, that was the end of the story. Know what I mean? If you're ready to hear it again, just turn the tape over.